Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday. It is September 20th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and we started off just another tight range today, as you can see here. Um, but we started trending down, and then the news came out of one, and we made that second leg down. And I mean, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, you can look at this a couple different ways. You measure that leg. Then you look for a measured move. You see, we went a little further than that. But if you look, there were you should have been looking for the second tier to drop to here. But when it kept going, just get another measured distance. And of course, it goes right to that. Went a little bit further, but it closed right into that measured distance again. So a couple of different ways to get to that level right there, and then we reverse from there. We actually got an overshoot of this side of the channel, and then it reversed. So um, even when news happens, the price action, you see, we still stayed within that range. Or I shouldn't say range within that um, channel. And it's, you know, the price action was still valid even during news items. So uh, the only problem with trading the news item and being in when it goes off is that it gets really volatile. So you might get stopped out even though you know where prices are likely to go. Or, or that type of thing. So it's still, especially on an FOMC day, I would be flat probably an hour before going into that, but definitely uh, within 30 minutes, just in case so you don't get stopped out or give back a bunch of nice profits or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So just keep that in mind. And, and the news went off right in here, and you can see it got kind of choppy, although that's pretty tame for an FOMC announcement. Uh, it did end up moving down pretty quickly and pretty strongly. So um, somebody else sent me an, um, an email today saying what a good day he had today. And he said he did break some of the rules, but what he did was he knew that prices were going to, you know, were moving really strongly. So he stayed in longer than he should have. And that's okay. Um, you know, when you get a strong trend, you want to get as much of it as you can. So I don't have a problem with that at all. But let's talk about the trades. There's not a whole lot of them today, um, but it was fairly straightforward uh, until the news came out. And then it was still pretty straightforward where we were probably, you know, we were going lower within this channel. Um, and you still could kind of get a target a couple of different ways there as well. So uh, fairly straightforward kind of day. Uh, it was a little slow early on. Um, you don't have a whole lot of room to profit on you know inside this range but this is wide enough to where you know if you've got room you can scalp out on them so uh, but let's talk about the trades uh, when I came in there was very little price action at all you actually had a failed second entry short here but that was before um, that was like around six o'clock so uh, when it tried to go lower again and made a double bottom right here and gave you another little bullish bar I liked going long there the only reason this is green is it's right into the high of the day so you got to be a little bit concerned about that but um i still like that trade and uh, it's a little bit aggressive but i like it it was a quick easy scalp and then um and notice we get a close outside the channel here so you're looking for a new high and the, the problem you got with this is it, it might just make one tick it may it may not even make a new high and it may sell off so you got to be careful with that and but it had been all uphill, and you, you tried to go lower a couple of times and bounced off that EMA. And that's a fairly bullish bar, too. So uh, so I like that one. Um, if you tried to sneak in early on the short, you can see you would have got burned on this one. Notice that you got two legs up, and then you get a little bit of a close outside. Uh, this is really the first convincing close, so you really needed to wait on a new high. But you could have looked at this like, hey, we closed outside and made a new high, but it's not a very convincing close until here, so I think you needed to wait. And uh, then once you made the lower high here, uh, this is not really a lower high, but it's the same thing. It's a double top, and you had those matching highs, and it ticked higher and then turned and closed almost on its own very low. So I like taking that short there. Um, because your channel had played out. You had your close outside and moved and actually two new legs up. And uh, and then you had a double top, and you had a little bit of a break higher here that's a little bit of a trap and then a pretty bearish bar. So I like that one. That was a nice, easy move down. 
and then you get a close outside of this little channel and uh, so you're expecting prices to make a new low. I like that one. And where does it go? It goes right to the previous low. It's tempting to go long right here, but we're not that far away from the EMA. Uh, so I'd wait on a, high, on a higher low, which comes here. And it actually went lower here and turned and went out the other side. You could either go long as soon as it went past that bar, or you could wait on this one to close and put a buy stop there. Or you could let it break higher right there since this was kind of an inside bar and then Maybe try to drop a limit order in right at the highs or maybe a tick back. But you wouldn't have had much luck getting filled on that if you tried to be uh, conservative in any way and it just took off. And then you get your failed second entry short here. Notice that new low, first entry, second entry. Uh, the reason this one is green is there's not really quite enough room to get out there. So the only way you could enter this was let it break higher and then drop a limit order. You could have gotten filled all the way back to here, and then that gives you plenty of room, and then it would have worked easily. So that's the only stipulation I got on that one. Otherwise, you don't really have enough room to get out. And uh, otherwise, I would have liked entering again here, but you you don't have enough room to get out, and, uh, and it wouldn't have come back far enough to let you try to use another limit order. But if I'm already in here, I'm probably not going to risk a, another... Uh, entry without just using a normal entry and you don't don't have room to scalp out there on a normal entry and then this looks a lot like a repeat of the previous one you get your clothes outside move to a new high and you just it's just a double test of this high nice bearish bar just go short right there you don't know that it's going to take straight off like that uh, but i like that entry um, just trying to ride it back to the ema and scalp out but it takes off and it uh, you can ride it all the way back down to the previous lows. Uh, and that gets you into the 1 o'clock hour. So you really don't want to take anything here until the news comes out. Okay, I had a slight interruption. I think we talked about this trade. And we have you got two legs down. Then you got a little two-legged correction. But notice your trend line um, down through there. And then this just kind of came back and confirmed it. This is a nice second entry short, fairly bearish bar. It's a double test of this breakout area. Notice we tested it once. We really tested it three times once, twice, three times. It's only about 12 minutes after the news, but this is not a really big volatile news item today. So, um, I mean, it is a volatile news item, but it didn't really become very volatile today. I mean, we got a little bit of quick movement there, uh, but um, I like that double test of that breakout area. And then you just, you're looking for at least a measured move down. That's what I would be looking for. And of course you got double that really. So you go once, twice, and this turned out to be a great move. And this is why you like to get runners from time to time. And uh, if you'd had a runner here, or if you just held on and I would have been looking for the measured move, I'd really rather, I mean, this is more of a range day. And so, and you can see that, resistance coming into play so i would have looked i would have been looking at the range as the bigger pattern rather than the channel but they they look like they're about equal here really so um and then we shot down we got an overshoot here so just remember when you get an overshoot of a channel a lot of times you don't get a retest of the low especially on a range type day and uh, so you really want to wait on a higher low uh this one is real close you could almost call this one blue but because we moved down so fast and um, and it is a news item you had to be really careful about going long but look how far away we are from the EMA I mean it's really tempting here but I just don't think you want to risk that um, so uh, I think you want to wait on that higher or low which comes here and this is kind of a repeat of this little setup right here it's, it's almost you know notice that we went lower first and then turned and went right out the other side. Um, if you waited on this bar to close, I think you're too close to the EMA and back to the trend line. So I think you have to skip that. But um, you probably want to skip this one altogether because this range is in play. Uh, uh, this trend, I'm sorry, this channel is in play, not the range. The range is in play too, but the channel is in, is in play. And you don't know that this channel. Um, is not going to still continue on, but the overshoot allows you just enough to where you could take this aggressively if you really wanted to. I would wait and see if you don't get another second entry short, and you do, 
Notice first entry, second entry, you got a nice bearish bar right off the EMA, the trend line, and a retest of the uh, what should have been the support area. Even though it never acted as support, it still acted as resistance. It's a pullback to retest that. And so I like going short there. Um, it was tempting to go short again here, but um, I think you need to wait on the second entry. Notice that's a new swing high compared to that one, and that's a new swing low compared to that one. So really that's just the first entry counting off the low. And if you're counting off the high, uh, you get a second entry here. So I kind of like, once it failed to go lower, I like kind of like going long here just because the range was still playing out and we had the overshoot. So uh, you figure we're going to come back up and uh, probably test this breakout area and maybe even go back to test the high again. And notice we got all the way back to the high. So uh, I like that one. It's it, you got to treat this. Uh, it's a little bit aggressive because we're there's a lot of sideways in there. But the problem is, is that the sell off was really big and there's a lot of people still looking at the sell off. But. Prices had already met their target, uh, your expected move down here. And so um, you might, you're probably better off just to sit tight and let this play out. You wouldn't have got any more trades this afternoon, but you should have gotten something out of these earlier ones. So, but I still think it, if you, you know, it's worth being aggressive with because look at the reward here. Um, if you catch this one, you could ride this all the way back to the top, all the way into the close, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, but, um, notice too, I marked this one. It's after two o'clock, but notice what's going on. You got a two tiered channel here, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. That's a perfect second entry right off a key entry point with the EMA, the trend line, a bullish bar. That's perfect. And again, you would have, uh, probably caught a runner there and you could have ridden that all the way up. So, and that's pretty much what you saw today. Um. I was hoping that maybe this thing would set off a trend that would continue, and maybe it will. Um, I mean, really, this is what normally happens after you get a news item. Within an hour or so, it takes it all back, and that's exactly what happened. That's another reason to be looking for a possible long here, down here, trying to be a little aggressive. Because very rarely will you get a big move off a news item that it doesn't take back within an hour or two. And uh, so... You know, you got to be careful of some kind of trap and reversal, and that's what you got down here. So um, after that second entry short there, I just didn't see. This one is very tempting because you could look at that like a failed second entry long as well. And um, But if you did get hung in that short right there uh, with that bearish bar, uh, once you started going sideways here, I would have taken what it would give you because this should have taken on off if it was going to go lower. And so I would have taken what it would give me here and uh, break even or you had several chances to get out with a couple of ticks. I definitely wouldn't have let it break above that bar right there without reversing if I was in the short there. So, uh, but anyway, uh, pretty good trading day. Not a great trading day, but there was enough movement here where you could, uh, you only needed a trade or two if you could catch one of those runners and make some fairly nice money. Um, this one. You wouldn't. Have, you probably would have exited right in here because it's getting into the one close to the one o'clock hour, and you want to be flat before that news comes out, and that's about what you're expecting to get is a uh, a move to the other side of the range, and so I would have. You would have had to exit this. I don't believe I would hold that through the news. Uh, try if I had a runner there because you don't want to get burned and give money back or end up letting a nice winner turn into a loser or whatever. So. Uh, I think you're better off to exit this when you reach this level right here or definitely by one o'clock. So, and that's still going to be, you might've got a little more out of it, but when it starts bouncing here, uh, we weren't quite to the low. So you, you're, you don't really want to be going long yet. Um, but you, you might've exited there. If you were trying to hold on anyway, you probably would have exited there. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for today. I'm not going to, there's not much else I can say about today. So I'm going to wrap it up and we'll come back tomorrow and wrap up our week. And, um, but I'm out here for today. So this is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. 
and we'll see you next time.